2.2, day 3, we're going to do those normal calculations on our calculator instead of doing them by hand. So the first thing you need to know about the calculator is where to start, what buttons to push. So first, second, VARS, and then depending on what you want to do. So second, VARS, let's take a look at those buttons. So you know where the second button's at, but VARS is right here. It's one that says distribution right above it. So if you hit second, VARS, it gives you a few options. So depending on what you want to do, we're going to either do normal CDF or inverse norm today. So two and three here. Normal CDF or inverse norm. So second VARS or the distribution button. And so first let's start out, we're going to find areas. So finding areas, that's when you use the normal CDF command. So second VARS, normal CDF. CDF stands for cumulative distribution function. Cumulative means um, it's building up. So for us, that means we're going to sum up all the areas in between those intervals. So we don't have to use the, the chart where we read to the left of the boundary. We're just going to use normal CDF, not PDF, CDF. So what do you need to type in? You hit normal CDF. You need the lower bound. You need the upper bound, the mean, and the standard deviation, those things. Lower bound, upper bound, mean, and standard deviation. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so that's if you just want to find areas between two z-scores or two boundaries. What if you have to work backwards? What if, what if you have to go from a percentile and then you want the z-score? So how do you find boundaries? So finding boundaries or z-scores. That's when we use the inverse norm command. And all it needs to know is the area to the left, the mean, and the standard deviation. So that's all you have to input. So if you want to work backwards, if I ask you what z-score goes with the 82nd percentile, you put 0.82, mean 0, standard deviation 1. That's what you type in. So those are the commands we're going to use with the examples below. If we have a specific example where it has its own mean and its own standard deviation, like the height example, let's say, then we'll use those means and standard deviations to punch in. But if you don't have a mean and standard deviation, if it's just z-scores, so the default setting on your calculator, the default mode for mean and standard deviation, it just uses 0 and 1. So that's the standard normal curve. That's for z-scores. The standard normal distribution, 0 and 1. So if you don't tell it a specific mean or distribution or standard deviation, it's going to use 0 and 1. OK, let's talk about what we need for the AP exam and as far as uh, showing work. So for the AP exam, just in general, you want to avoid calculator speak. And we'll talk about how to avoid that, but just don't say I typed in normal CDF and got an answer. Okay, we need to be way more explicit than that. In general, here's the three steps. So you need a stated distribution and the values of interest. Basically say it's normal, here's the mean, here's the standard deviation. Show your work, which that could include not only showing that it's normal and the mean standard deviation, but also shading a curve. And illustrating which region you want and labeling your curve and then give an answer and make sure that answer is in context of the problem try to avoid just giving numbers without any context so let's look at the first example part a so it says suppose that Clayton Kershaw of the Los Angeles Dodgers throws his fastball with a mean velocity of 94 miles per hour pretty fast and the standard deviation is 2 miles per hour uh, the distribution is also normal, which is good for us. That means we can use all these um, calculations. So about what proportion of his fastballs will travel at least 100 miles per hour? So part of our evidence, part of our work, we start with just sketching the curve. So here's my normal curve, nice and symmetric. And here's my two parameters, mean 94, standard deviation 2. And let's put the mean right in the middle there. So mean is 94 miles per hour. So what proportion is above 100 miles per hour? So we can use 100 as our boundary, somewhere in here, 100 miles per hour. And I'll just shade everything above that. So what's, what's this proportion? This is part of our evidence. If I had to guess, I don't know, 12%. Um, we'll see. It's probably not drawn to scale. So using our calculator, so proportion of fastballs greater than 100 miles per hour. We need to be really careful about how we say this on the AP exam. So we use technology and this command, normal CDF, 
So in the AP exam, for this proportion, proportion of fastballs greater than 100 miles per hour, notice I use that proportion notation again, we use technology and the command normal CDF. The reason we have to go through all that trouble is because you need to be general. Um, AP graders may use different calculators. They may, they may not know exactly what command you're using. So using technology and command normal CDF. If you haven't inspired, it's a little bit different, but we'll talk about that. Normal CDF, so the lower bound would be 100 and everything above 100. So that goes, who knows, off to infinity, right? Well, we don't have an infinity button, so the lower bound goes to 100. The upper bound, uh, let's pick a really big number. How about 1 million? Certainly not going to go to a million, so that's good enough for an approximation. I just pick a really big number for infinity. We don't have an infinity button. Uh, the mean is 92, or 94, excuse me. And the standard deviation, that's 2. So this is part of my answer in AP context. Don't just type, I, I use normal CDF and these numbers. Don't do that. We have to just let the, the readers know that we use technology in this command. And notice, I labeled each one too. Lower, upper, mean, standard deviation. I even color coded them. Those have to be there. Do not just list numbers, then it won't make any sense. I need to know like what you use for the bounds and then what the mean and standard deviation was. Don't just list them out here. It's not like this accepted notation that everyone knows. This is specific to your calculator, so we have to just say what each value represents. So let's look at the calculator. So second, vars, and let's go down to normal CDF. And if you have a newer calculator, your, your screen looks like this. It'll just tell you exactly where and what to type in. Lower, upper, mean, standard deviation. If you have an older calculator, you still have to write it out and put commas between it. Um, I can also update your calculator to this mode, um, depending on what calculator you have. So if you still have a TI-84 um, or even an 83, bring it to me and I can see if I can update it so your screen looks like this. Otherwise, the lower bound was 100. So 100. Zero, zero. The upper bound, we just said pick a big number. So how about a million? And then the mean was 94. Standard deviation was 2. Paste? Yeah, sure. Enter. 0.00134. So it looks like it's pretty rare for him to throw fastballs 100 miles an hour more. There's only a 0.13% chance of him doing that. Okay, so for this proportion, we use technology, this command, and then what was our result? So, which gives an area, that little red piece right there, which gives an area or a proportion of 0.0013. Or another way to say that is about 0.13% of the time, Kershaw's fastballs will go 100 miles per hour or more, which means he's probably maybe thrown one in his life ever. And just because Clayton Kershaw's a good guy, I'm going to add a little picture of him here. So there you go, Clayton Kershaw. All right, part B about what proportion of his fastballs go between 93 and 95. So we have an interval. Let's start with the curve again. So it's still normal, mean 94, standard deviation of 2. And then the mean smack dab in the middle there, it's 94 miles per hour. So part of your evidence, you need to represent this interval, 93 and 95, which is only one mile per hour faster than the mean in both directions. So one faster, one slower. So let's represent 93 and 95. We'll do it in blue here. 93, 95, about one on each side. And then let's go ahead and shade in between 93 and 95. So we can easily do this in our calculator now. So using technology, and this is the, the answer I'm going to give on an AP exam. Using technology with the command normal CDF, normal CDF, and you should pretty well be able to pick out the lower bound, 93, upper bound, 95, right? So lower is 93, upper 95, the mean still 94, standard deviation of 2. So you throw that in your calculator, you should come up with this area. And then so for our result, we need to give it in context. So we find 38.29% of Kershaw's fastballs to be between 93 and 94, or excuse me, 93 and 95 miles per hour. 
Not bad, and saves us a lot of pain and heartache from converting to z-scores and then using the chart. Okay, uh, how about part C? What's the 30th percentile of Kershaw's distribution of fastball velocities? What's the 30th percentile? So again, instead of trying to come up with in your head, let's provide our work, provide our evidence, let's sketch the curve. So normal, 94.2. Mean is at 94, right in the middle. And so the 30th percentile, that's the lower 30%, right? You're in the 30th percentile, that means you're only above 30% of the other observations. So I shaded it, that's the lower 30%. So since we already know the mean and standard deviation, we can use that inverse norm command, INV norm. Inverse means it works backwards. So if you give it the percentile or the area underneath this boundary, it'll give you the value on that boundary, or like the z-score. Okay, so let's use inverse norm. So again, here's my AP answer. So using technology, with the command inverse norm, INV norm. Again, if you just write inv norm in a bunch of numbers, you will automatically lose credit. That only makes sense to you in your head and not necessarily all the AP readers or anyone else reading your work. So let's be clear. The area to the left of that boundary is 0.3, this 30th percentile. The mean is 94, standard deviation is 2. That's all you need to give. So let's check that one. Back on my calculator, second, vars, let's go to inverse norm, it's going to work backwards. The area is 0.3, the mean was 94, standard deviation is 2. Go ahead and paste, hit enter, so 92.95. And again, if you don't have this newer calculator version, you basically type it in like this, inv norm 0.3 comma 94 comma 2. So in context, what do we have? So we find 92.95 miles per hour. That's at the 30th percentile. 30th percentile for what? 30% 30th percentile of Kershaw's fastballs or his distribution of fastballs. So again, it's a lot more going on here than just this 92.95. In terms of the AP stats exam, they're going to want to see all of this. You drew the curve, you supported it with your evidence, you didn't just say the calculator command, you said what each value represents, and then you answered it in context of Kershaw's fastballs. Part D. What fastball velocities would be considered low outliers for Kershaw? Okay, so what does it mean to be a low outlier? you got to be beyond that outlier fence we talked about in Chapter 1. So that means Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. you got to be beyond this to be a low outlier. Okay, so let's draw the curve again and let's talk about what Q1 would be and what Q3 would be. Because we're going to need to calculate the IQR. If you forgot what IQR is, that's the interquartile range. That's Q3 minus Q1. So here's Q1. So I know that that's the, the lower 25%. So we could find that with inverse norm. And then Q3 up here, that's the 75th percentile because it's got 25% above it. Okay, so for Q1, let's go in our calculator. Let's just do inverse norm for 0.25. The mean's 94. The standard deviation is 2. So if you go inverse norm, that's going to go Without doing all the z-score stuff and stuff from the chart, it'll right away tell you who's in the 25th percentile for the distribution. So 0 0.25, 94, 2, you should get 92.651 miles per hour. And then for Q3, let's do the same thing, except for the area below Q3 would just be 0 0.75. So inverse norm, 0.75 for the area, same mean, same standard deviation. We should get 95.349 miles per hour. Okay, so we got Q1 in purple, Q3 in blue. Now the question is, what's the IQR? There's Q1, there's Q3. IQR is a measure of spread. So basically, what's the distance between Q3 and Q1? So Q3 minus Q1. 
95.349 Q3 minus 92.651, that's Q1, so 2.698 for IQR. Okay, so we're still going to look for low outliers here. So I need Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. That'll give me my lower boundary. That'll give me my fence. So for lower outliers, we need a lower boundary. We need a lower boundary. So for our Q1 minus 1.5 IQR, what does that look like? Okay, so Q1 we have... Don't forget about this 1.5. People always forget about this 1.5 for some reason. Should get 88.604 miles per hour. So that is our lower boundary on outliers, on those low outliers. Okay, that's great. We did all the math. We got the answer. Now let's answer in context. What does this mean? 88.604 miles per hour. That's our low boundary for outliers. So in context of the situation... Fastballs below that speed, 88.604, would be considered, what would they be considered? Low outliers for Kershaw. Okay, so what do we just do? Found Q1, found Q3, just use inverse norm to get those, that was kind of nice. Found the IQR. Then we just used the lower boundary for outliers and got this number. Last example. Last example. So a different pitcher's flat fastballs have a mean of 92 miles per hour. And all you know is that 40% of his fastballs go less than 90. What's the standard deviation for his fastballs if this is a normal distribution? So it's a different pitcher. You know the mean. And all you know is that 40% go less than 90 but we don't know the standard deviation. So let's sketch what the curve and, have, and provide what we know. So I know it's normal. The mean's 92, but big old question mark for that standard deviation. We don't know what that is. Um, but we know mean 92, so I'll put that right in the middle there. And then the other thing we know is that 40% go less than 90 miles per hour. So this is... This is representing everything I know right here visually. This is a diagram, right? 90 miles per hour, 40% or less. So I shaded 40%. So what would we need to know to move forward? Well, if you knew what the z-score was for that, that would be helpful because the z-score formula uses standard deviation. So we're going to work backwards. We're going to work backwards. If I could get the z-score for, for, for the 40th percentile, I'd be in business. So let's do that in our calculator. The z-score for the 40th percentile. That's actually very easy to do on table A if you have it out in front of you. Or you could just do inverse norm. The area is 0.4. And for z-scores, the mean would be 0. Standard deviation is 1. That's just standard normal distribution. Those are just z-scores. That's the default setting in the calculator. So we should get that z-score to be negative, two, negative 0.2. 533. So that's the z-score for the 40th percentile. So 90 miles per hour must be 0.2533 standard deviations below the mean. Now you should be able to figure this out. If 90 miles per hour is actually 0.2533 standard deviations below the mean, we'll just use the z-score formula. So z equals the mean, z equals, not the mean, the individual observation, 90, minus the mean, divided by standard deviation. And that's pretty simple. You can solve that. You should get standard deviation is about 7.90 miles per hour. All right, that's all for these notes. Hope your calculators are working well and you're a pro by now. I'll see you in class.